Hello and welcome to the Second Drafts podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today we'll be continuing on the topic of world building. And uh, this time, more specifically, you know, we're going to talk about building a future instead of a history. So a future uh, probably for science fiction. And uh, when you're, say, creating a science fiction story, uh, specifically something that you know isn't like an aliens attack type story or Mars attacks, <laughs> <laughs> you'll uh, most likely be looking into uh, humanity's future and how like the technology and how society has kind of developed. And so the big question is how, uh, how can you write about the future when everything is so uncertain and do it in a way that's really believable. And, uh, today we'll just be going over a couple basic do's and don'ts when it comes to the world building. Uh, and before we get started, of course, uh, we want to make sure that everyone stands, understands that, uh, these are just sp- specific for the types of science fiction stories or situations. There's so many genres and combinations of genres that uh, you have when you're doing science fictions that these might not even apply. And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of options out there, and you know we're not going to cover all of it in one podcast, so not even yeah. going to try. <laughs> and of course, uh, with both of us as well there you know we're imperfect humans so some of what our opinions might not necessarily be the the best to use for your specific story but it's just kind of our general general tips that we uh like to follow if we were ourselves going to do a science fiction story mm-hmm. so uh with that out of the way there i'm going to uh just monopolize the time a little bit more there i uh, hope you don't mind ethan <laughs> No, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, so my first tip, uh, basically, for creating science fiction is uh, just about the speculation on the future technology and uh, how it would affect society. So when you're creating a science fiction story, and most likely set in the future, uh, technology is hopefully going to have advanced and advanced to such a point where it will have affected society in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to go back again, but I'm going to have to reference uh, the anime Psychopaths. (laughs) I just really like that. I saw this one coming. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I just really like uh, that sci-fi story that they made. And uh, one aspect of uh, the science fiction that uh, they get into the story involves the future of food, uh, which is kind of random, but it does make sense in the actual context of the story. But uh, if you recall from our previous podcast on villains, uh, the technology advanced to a certain point where they can give a number to represent someone's current mental state. And uh, can be found out with just a simple scan. Uh, in the show, they try and stop criminals before they become criminals by finding people who are registering high numbers. Uh, so just a little background there. And uh, one of the things that happens is they talk about uh, how the food kind of has advanced to a point where it's just uh, this... Uh, mono-specific grain and the villains are uh, the villain rather uh, mm-hmm. tries to use that to introduce a virus into it which would kind of devastate the uh, the food production yeah. and another kind of side to that uh, is that with the number side of things uh, it's not just used for finding criminals as well Uh, It's also used uh, for psychology and for job placement uh, and other things that are just kind of touched on briefly. Uh, The number uh, itself has a lot of different aspects. And even though it's not explored so much in the show, it feels like they could take that concept and make a whole other type of show in it. So maybe uh, somebody gets assigned a job 
uh, based on their number, but they're unsatisfied uh, with life because of it, something like that. Mm -hmm. So they take those initial concepts like the number uh, or say just thinking about the future of food and they kind of uh, explore that just a little bit to build up that world like they just kind of speculate on other things that would be happening not just their focus like they could have just kind of left it at the criminal side of things and kind of moved on and not done anything extra and not put in those little tidbits but it wouldn't feel as real if they hadn't have showed the other aspects of how it affected society and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So the takeaway I would say is uh, just look at whatever idea that you're going to be taking that science fiction idea and just try and explore it to its fullest and see, like try and think like how would this affect other people and how would it affect society? How would it affect like economics? Kind of like what we were talking about mm -hmm. in the uh, previous world building. So really mm -hmm. just, Explore it to its fullest and you'll get uh, those little tidbits that you can just add in and it'll make it feel a lot more real. Okay, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I really have to start watching this Psycho Pass. It <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds very cool. I definitely recommend it quite a bit. It's, uh, it's really good. And it's not just, uh, it's not just a copy of uh, Minority Report or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. They really do... Uh, they take those core concepts and they really develop it quite well, I feel. Hmm. Yeah. So what do you have for us, Ethan? Tidbits of uh, your wisdom. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about creating some worlds for your story that's set in the future this time rather than the past. So, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose for science fiction, um, yeah, the core idea is to show kind of technology of today taken to its logical extreme or you know how you suppose it might evolve and then how that affects humanity mm -hmm. now um look not every futuristic story has to do that you can you can do a lot of other things with futuristic settings but if if you don't look at technology and how it affects people then then you're typically not writing sci-fi and uh, like i said there's nothing wrong with that but it's just good to know what makes the genre tick that you're writing in. Um, yeah. But I mean, world building a future story world can apply to like all sorts of settings. It's, uh, well, genres at least. Uh, Sci-fi, you get some dystopian that you can use there. I mean, think of the Hunger Games. Hunger mm -hmm. Games isn't really sci-fi. If you look at it carefully, it's, it's more of a social commentary. Um, instead of taking technology to its logical extreme, it kind of takes more of some of our social concepts to to their logical extreme, yeah. which is which is significantly different. Um, nobody would compare Star Trek, for instance, to <laughs> yeah. the Hunger Games. It's it's not yeah. at all the same. But uh, and then speaking of dystopian, it's just a thought that struck me earlier while compiling the notes for this. Is uh, the opposite of dystopian is of course utopian. And strangely enough, you don't see a lot of uh, books in that in that genre. I mean, I I, I doubt it even is a genre. Well, I so, think we're uh, getting a few of them, though. There's, um, it comes to mind, I haven't read it, but uh, mm -hmm. the Divergent series, I think, would kind of be considered under that. Um, yeah, that's but, still going to be dystopian, though, because that world is pretty messed up, isn't it? Okay, well, I, I just, it's... I thought it would be like the utopian, quote-unquote, and then you find <laughs> out that it's not really as good as yeah. it. No, I suppose. Yeah, know. because if you think you about it, you could take it's it two be... different ways, I guess. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's it's going to be difficult to write a utopian story because kind of the 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 core of any good story is conflict and and bad things happening and how people deal with bad things. Where if you're kind of trying to show a, an actually utopian society, they wouldn't really be bad things for people to deal with. So yeah, I guess it'll be difficult to make a true utopian. It'll have to be, like you said, a kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek uh, utopia. Now that I say it like that, I think there might be books like that. I'm definitely going to be uh, <laughs> looking that up. <laughs> Doing some but, uh, research, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting to talk about sometime, you know, the dystopian versus utopian genres and whether people have tried to do books there. 
Well, yeah, um, I'd say probably just, uh, well, we're kind of getting a little off topic there, but um, <laughs> yes. it kind of, I think it would come down to almost opposite ways that it goes about, like the dystopian, you know, you're you're trying to get it back to that relative status quo, whereas in a mm-hmm. utopia, you find out <clears throat> eventually that really things aren't the way that they seem, and then things break down after yeah. that. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, get back on topic. Okay, so let's take a couple. Uh, well, take a look at a couple of uh, tips or do's and don'ts for uh, creating a, a sci-fi world. I'm uh, I'm going to try to keep this more specific to futuristic. But you know, very many of the do's and don'ts we looked at for the the history world building kind of will apply the same here, just you know, in reverse in forecasting. But uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so when you're creating a world, the first tip I think I would give is that it's good to realize that in good storytelling and in forecasting the, f- the future, especially, look, you're going to get one unexplained component of your world building that you're allowed to get away with without explaining, and that's <laughs> it. You, you can't do it with more than one. Yeah. So, for instance... In in a, in a sci-fi world, and look, this applies not just to future; it applies to any any kind of story, really, any fantasy world building. So, in fantasy, for instance, this will be your magic system. Often, uh, sometimes people don't really explain the magic in too many details; they don't get some real-sounding reason for it. The magic's just there, and it just works, and you just have to accept it. It's and magic. <laughs> yeah, it's magic. <laughs> yeah, so your reader will accept one thing, and but you shouldn't push that. So. In sci-fi, usually the, the, the one thing is your faster than light travel. Mm-hmm. Um, if you think of Battlestar Galactica, they've got the faster than light jumps that they make, and that's never explained, and it doesn't have to be. <laughs> but in return, they do explore and explain the Cylons and their creation and why they were created and what they're all about in a lot of details. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, having already taken the FTL travel as their one unexplained thing, they, they didn't try to do it again with some, with the Cylons as well. They, you know. So, that's why they usually say, look, if, if you're gonna have <laughs> a sci-fi with, with faster than light travel that you don't explain, you, you really should leave magic out of this. Having <laughs> magic space marines is just, that's pushing it a bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, well, yeah, and I mean, um, even if we look at, say, um, with Star Trek, like we've almost already been kind of conditioned with Star Trek uh, mm-hmm. over the years uh, growing up with it. Uh, might not be the case nowadays, but uh, they use the faster than light travel uh, all the time and mm-hmm. uh, they don't really explain it. And, you know, you can just kind of go with it. And then if you actually learn about it later on, uh, you'll kind of learn about why it wouldn't really work in the situations that they're talking about, especially the 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 uh, amount that they're using it too. Uh, yeah. Just the whole time <laughs> time displacement that would go mm-hmm. on with that. So uh, with that side of things, it's probably a lot easier just the fast and light, just to kind of leave it as it is and not mm-hmm. have to explain it too much. But yeah, if you if you push it, you're going to push the boundaries of uh, suspending disbelief for yeah, sure exactly and in star trek i think they really towed the line there because they had both the fuss and the light travel and then due to i mean in the initial season due to the constraints of sh- of of budgets to show the ship landing on each planet they that's why they created the uh the, the transporters the teleporters whatever. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh so you know they were kind of pushing the boundaries there because they had two of these things and they never really but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Try to have only the one thing and really try to give explanations for the rest. Even you know, even if it's not real, of course, this is fiction. You're making stuff up. But, I mean, at least try to explain it in something that sounds a bit science-y. <laughs> well, and especially back then, just uh, you bring it up there, just kind of remind me. Like, nowadays, uh, we have a lot more access to the research and all the uh, the stuff that goes into... Like, can this happen? And yeah. back then, you could probably get away with it because they wouldn't really have that, right? So yeah. now it, now it's a lot harder. 
It is, exactly. Um, which actually brings me directly to my second tip that I want to give today, and it's um, that you should always assume that your readers are smarter than you are, because it's true, <laughs> they are. And uh, <laughs> if you ever underestimate your readers and think, oh, well, you know, this sounds sciencey enough, I'm not going to do my research on this, you <laughs> will get burned. And yeah. you, will get <laughs> you will get people who start resenting you for that. So... This Bad is reviews the, will come. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's <laughs> this. This is one of the the, the closest things that I'll give to almost a, a, a rule, you know, a law that you really need to to keep in mind, and that's do some research at least around the core concepts what that you, that you're working with, you know, um, and look around for some expert opinions on how these things might turn out if if you're working with a current technology that you're trying to extrapolate and forecast what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to send out a couple emails too. I'm sure that uh, yeah, people exactly. would be willing to give you an opinion. Yeah, and you can get surprisingly good access to people who know what they're talking about on sites like Quora, where you can post a question and, of course, you'll have a couple of people coming there and talking and not really knowing what they're saying, but you can get physics professors to engage with you there, which is fantastic. This is something that we've never had before, uh, and it's very interesting. You can get access to, to experts in many fields. Technology, even on our end of things, is uh, <laughs> growing <Exactly>. very well. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're building a future world here. So. We understand, and you need to understand, there's a lot of leeway in building a future history. You, a lot of things can happen, just about anything. But people will tend to notice when you're having something happen just for convenience sake, which will not make them as happy <laughs> as making things make sense. And that's unfortunately going to take a bit of work, a bit of investment on your side mm -hmm. to figure out what's a realistic way for this progression of events to build my future history. Yeah. yeah. So, for instance, you could you could have alien technology come out of the blue to change everything, and it, I mean, that'll be interesting. There are some stories that work with that, and that makes that interesting. I think, the, excuse me, the Mass Effect stories, I don't know whether you've played the Mass Effect games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they work like that. You know, you've got this 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 mass network that allows people to travel faster than light. It, uh, I mean, that's interesting, and it's not really explained. It's they want an explained thing, and it's also not a human technology. They decided to make it a, you know, like a forerunner or whatever. Sorry, I've yeah. been playing Halo recently, so I'm calling it forerunner. <laughs> I forget what they were called in Mass Effect: Prometheans or no, yeah, still Halo. Damn Prometheans. It. Yeah. <laughs> so. That, that could be interesting, and it, there are stories like that, but I think we as humans, your readers, we find it much more interesting to have a human technology that we can see today, extrapolated as to how, how it will evolve one day and <clears throat> how it will change our lives. And seeing those connections, I think, is, is, is part of what's very interesting to readers of sci-fi and almost any kind of futuristic story. Mm hmm Yeah. So I would recommend trying as much as you can to, to link. And this is really, if you think about it, this is almost the same thing we said about building your history. We said, have your history link up with your current events because that's important, that link. If you divorce the link, uh, if you break that link, then readers don't really always know why they should care. And the same applies here. Uh, yeah, like uh, uh, you were just mentioning with Mass Effect there, they really tied in very much the technology advancing and those uh, Prometheans, the ancient aliens that made them, they really tied it in with uh, the overall story and the uh, enemy that they're facing yeah. and everything like that. That became and, the whole thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and if it was if it was kind of disconnected there, it probably wouldn't have been as good of a story or as good of a world building because it's kind of just almost throwaway. It's like, yeah. oh, we have this technology now, but you'll never n know anything about it or why it was there, mm. or who the people yeah. who were who made it or anything. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. it was definitely made better by uh, having those included, those connections. Mm. Yeah. So as a quick example of this, um, 
And I'm going to return again to faster than I travel, because in sci-fi that's most often what, you know, people, the, f the first thing you need to solve. Mm -hmm. um, like if you're trying to create a faster than light travel method, for instance, and you want to bring in, say, quantum mechanics to try to explain some of it, you know, at least go and read up on some of the more advanced theories out there, or even just the basic theories. Don't assume you know what it's about because you've seen two episodes of Star Trek or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's science is a bit more complex than that, so. You, you know, do some of the work and see if you can talk to people, bounce ideas off of people, and you know, it doesn't mean you have to understand it all, but your readers are really smart, and they're going to know when you're completely faking something um, mm -hmm. compared to when you've done at least some homework. And when you do your homework, that is a, a recipe for delighting your readers. And the thing to realize is It'll make them happy even if you get some details wrong. Mm -hmm. Because just the, there's such a big difference between seeing, you know, this guy really tried and he got some of it right and some of it sounds quite convincing and believable versus, you know, this other guy who just doesn't seem to care and he thinks we're idiots yeah. because he's, <laughs> you know. So, but of course, this, this, this tip doesn't apply to your your one unexplained technology, of course. That's the exception, which is kind of the point of it. Yeah. One thing that uh, I just kind of thought of there, and fortunately it's another uh, a bad habit of ours to bring up, mm -hmm. but uh, the Martian uh, <laughs> kind of reminded me of that. He did uh, a lot of research on um, just even, like, say, gr growing potatoes, and if it was mm -hmm. possible to grow potatoes in, in a Martian environment and everything like that. And uh, it really rung true in the end because, like, uh, if those things weren't in there, it wouldn't have been even the same story at all. Because um, I'm not sure if anyone has seen the movie there, or if you have, <laughs> if you have seen it yet, Ethan. But not yet. <laughs> okay, I won't. I won't tell any any spoilers there. But uh, it definitely would not have been the same movie if they didn't kind of go into explaining some of the things there because mm. that really is the movie. Like, <laughs> that's half of it and uh, mm. half of the book. And I, I think it even goes into a little bit more detail in the book about these things. And he definitely uh, did his research and he talked to people who uh, who would know the answers to his questions mm. before he published it. So it definitely... Mm. Uh, it rung true, and it uh, you can see it in in the sales <laughs> alone. Yeah, exactly. I mean, imagine the disdain you as a reader would sense from the guy if he just decided, oh, you know, I'm writing a story based on Mars. Of course it's not real. Why do I need to know these things about how potatoes are grown? That's just silly. Let's just <laughs> put something in there. It doesn't matter. He just grew potatoes. Uh, that's that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's good. So, um... The third and final tip that I'm going to cover today is uh, a bit more, you know, trying to keep in mind how the different things in your world will interact. I think this, the, you already touched on that in your in your psychopath example, where, you know, there are different things. There's not just the one technology that you want to focus on. The, the world is bigger than that, and there are more things. So, for instance, the numbers in psychopaths are used to, to help people with their mental health and to help catch criminals. But on the other flip side, it's also used to uh, help assign people to jobs and to do other things. You know, every technology that we have will typically have more than one application. And it's mm -hmm. good to remember that when you extrapolate your future history. Um, so keep in mind things like the laws of unintended consequences where you know, trying to do something one way will typically come up against human nature and things might end up completely different than what you expect it to. And if you can nail some of those concepts, how they evolve and... Now, I mean, you might ask, how do you do this? And unfortunately, there's, there's, there isn't an easy answer. Um, you can't just sit and try to simulate what the future will be without some really hard work and hard questions and research. So in this case, all I can tell you, look, it's, it helps if you're widely read, if you read a lot, if you engage a lot with ideas. 
and then you will at least know the right questions to ask the experts when you get to them about mm-hmm. you know how how will these technologies affect one another or how will this future evolve and always just keeping in mind that it's never just one thing nothing you focus on for your story will just be one thing it'll affect human beings in all sorts of ways that yeah and something that uh just kind of reminded reminded me of there as well uh just on the side of society how it affects society uh, mm-hmm. i can't remember unfortunately the name of the book it's just i just thought of it literally right now but uh, <laughs> uh there's this book which kind of almost took the concept of uh respawning in games oh yeah and applied it to the real world so like you if you die and you're hooked up to like this machine like uh, or you have it kind of activated or something like that then you're just you'll kind of come back to life you'll be uh you'll get a clone or something like that i think it is and then you're just you're back and um one of the things that they kind of touched on in it that i remember was that uh catholicism how it developed with that is that people who are catholics do not participate like they don't they don't have those machines because they consider that it's uh, against the will of God. Oh yeah, of course they would. <laughs> yeah, and so it's just kind of extrapolating that from that technology. And unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it. And that I can't remember exactly. Though. Yeah, I can't remember exactly how the story develops, but I think it's very much intertwined with those two things. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna have to search for that. Yeah, I I wanted to read it back in the day, but then. Just, you know, it's one of those ones where you never get around to it, unfortunately. But, it. <laughs> but definitely, uh, audience, uh, don't do what we do again. And uh, make sure that you read. <laughs> read these things and and uh, talk to people and uh, just get all that research done before before you do that. Yeah. So uh, I think that's, that's it for our general tips there. Mm-hmm. So uh, why don't you let us know what you like about uh, the science fiction worlds that you've read and uh, how that can kind of translate to other stories. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. Mm-hmm. See you next time. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash jmclean and become a patron today.